today's video I thought I'd do a Chanel comparison video of the two Chanel bags that I own. One is a recent purchase from 2014 and the other one is a vintage Chanel I purchased secondhand in Osaka, Japan recently this past April. So here we have the Chanel medallion tote and this is in a caviar leather. So this is more of like, you know, a durable everyday sort of tote and something that I do carry quite frequently. And my other Chanel bag is in here, this box, so I'll just do a little mini unboxing, which I've actually done an unboxing slash review video of this bag earlier on my channel, but it's been a while since I showed it, and actually I don't use it as often as I would like to, mostly because this is more of a fragile bag and it's a lot more expensive than my Chanel medallion tote. But this is the Chanel Perfect Edge flat bag, and as you can see, I have left the flannel pieces on the bag when it's in storage just to maintain the bag structure and just to prevent any scratching or tarnishing on the hardware. But let's just go ahead and remove it. So this is a double flap bag, so I know some bags of this size are just a single flap where this portion would just open up and you have this large cavity. However, this is a double flap, so you're going to have another magnetic closure on the inside. And once again, I stuffed it with a flannel as well to maintain the shape. So the inside of the bag has this burgundy fabric and, of course, the zip pocket. And there's also this, you know, flat pocket in the front as well. And on the back, there's an external flat pocket as well lined with that same burgundy fabric. So this bag is quite versatile and can be worn in various ways. You can first carry it as a top handle bag. And I actually have, if you Google this bag, the Chanel Perfect Edge flat bag, you will see some celebrities carry the bag like this. I think I saw a picture of Miranda Kerr carrying this, but I thought that was a good idea. And most traditionally, you can wear this as a shoulder bag, like such. And it kind of hits me on the mid-waist level. And I don't like to carry it on as a shoulder bag if it's too crowded because, of course, you don't want this like flipping around and scratching things because this is a calf leather bag, so it is less scratch resistant than, say, a caviar bag. So that is why I wear this bag a little bit less. But I think the sheen of this calf leather is gorgeous. So now for the comparison portion, as you can see, this size, this tote is a lot larger, carries a lot more, it's more durable. This is a little bit more fragile and a dressier bag. They can both be carried on your shoulder and as a top handle bag. And this is a style that came out actually in 2002, but they reintroduced it. So I think actually it came out before 2002. 2002 was the reissue date of it. So this is a classic bag and I have seen a few people wear it. And as I mentioned before in the beginning of this video, I did purchase this in Japan, specifically in Osaka. Osaka has a really extensive second-hand market for luxury goods. There's quite a few Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gucci, and a ton of other brands that are second-hand and in great quality. So I was able to get a really great deal on this bag. I paid $700 out the door, and that's in US dollars. So to me, that was an exceptional deal. If you do see this bag on sites such as Trade Easy, this is retailing for around $1,400, which still isn't too bad, but $700 in Japan was a crazy deal so I had to just pick up this bag there's an exterior pocket on the back which is great for you know if you want to put your phone in it any cards or whatever and the interior of the bag is quite large I do have my wallet and other things in there currently but as you can see there's a zip pocket in the back and there's also a flat pocket as well so I'm not sure if you can see it from here you probably see my other junk in the bag but yeah this bag holds quite a bit and I do prefer to carry it kind of like on my forearm like this because you can kind of have control of the bag and it's not like if it's on your shoulder you don't know if you might bump into something you know but then again this is a caviar material so you don't have that great concern that you would for the calf leather so I think one of the signature pieces on this bag is this medallion right here which reminds me of like a super 80s sort of feel and I did mention that exact same point in my Japan haul um, where I did feature this bag for the first time but yeah, this is obviously the zip pull. So yeah, it has an entire zip on the top. So, you know, everything is secure. If you want to like swing around your bag or you're in a rush or whatever, you don't have to worry about things falling out or possibly getting pickpocketed depending on where you are. So you can see a common theme with my Chanel items is the black and gold style. The hardware on this is actually not considered gold, it's considered bronze, I believe. So this bag retailed for $4,200, so with tax out the door, it was $4,500. So that's a significant price jump from the $700 Chanel that I got in Osaka. 
So that is also like another reason why I would be more inclined to just wear this more on an everyday basis. And this one is mostly for like, you know, special occasions or if you already know the plans, where you're going to be during the day and if it's a good area, you know, not overly crowded. So you don't have to worry about, you know, protecting this bag the whole time you're out. You can just relax and such. But yeah, this was purchased at South Coast Plaza back in 2014, I believe it was December. And maybe the price has gone up, I haven't checked the market value for this bag. But typically, what I heard is that Chanel bags increase by $500, I believe, twice a year. So they do have this bag also in a burgundy leather, I believe. But of course, I do prefer the black classic leather. 